Welcome to Senior Connection. I'm Nan Rafter, your host. Today, Senior Connection is on the road and we are at Cornerstone in Milford, Mass. We are gonna be talking about brain healthy cooking and I have the experts with me to just do that. I have Christine Matier, who is the Director of Community Relations at Cornerstone. And we have Kim Smith, who is Director of Culinary Services. And we have Chef Josh Sims, who is the chef who will be cooking this delicious, healthy meal. Thank you guys for coming on our show. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. This is wonderful. It's so important for especially our seniors to take care of their health. And I'm so glad that you have committed yourselves to doing this. And I am just excited that you're here to tell all of our people out there what it is brain healthy cooking is. So Christine, did you want to begin? So I just wanted to share why we do this program. Um, we offer this program not only in all of our communities, um, through SLR, Senior Living Residences, um, but we also do this program on the road to teach people how do you eat brain healthy, what does that mean, how do you do it affordably, and what are the benefits of doing it. So w one of the reasons that we started doing this is that you know we do see a lot of families that will come in that their loved ones have memory loss, um, and you know we started doing this many years ago before Mediterranean diet was even a thing. Um, and now it's proven with lots of research that this actually does have a lot of health benefits. So not only are we able to give our residents a great quality of life, um, we're able to help hopefully slow down some of the progression of dementia. Um, and we actually take our research and we're bringing it to the table and showing people that you can eat healthy and it tastes great. Um, so we get to be out there educating the community but also bringing a great quality to our residents. And that is very unusual that you offer this in, in this assisted living, correct? In this particular assisted living, it's not. We've been doing this since the beginning of our assisted living, but you don't see this type of diet in, in many. No. So we really do focus on being brain healthy. Mm -hmm. So it's an adaptation off of the Mediterranean diet. And that's something that makes you special. Yes. Yes. And you did a lot of research. You, you talked about that. We started the research in 2006, actually, and we put it in place in 2008, I believe? No, I'm sorry, 2009. So we started with our uh, South Boston location, and coming from South Boston, you have a lot of people who are very meat and potatoes. That's what they mm -hmm. want, meat and potatoes, you know? So it was a little bit of a challenge, but we started implementing it, and it gradually started working, and people liked it. They liked the fresh vegetables, the you know, a lot of the items that we, we cooked with, they didn't realize that we were putting extra vegetables in or extra uh, certain spices, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a spice of life. There's one of our uh, brands that we really, really like. I'm um, sorry. Sorry about that. The Spice of Life. The Spice of Life is a spice that we created that helps a lot of the seniors, you know, with uh, instead of using salts. Mm -hmm. Because, as you know, salts are not good for our seniors. So what we do is we created the spice. It has 17 different herbs and spices. And we call it the Spice of Life. And we pretty much cook with that on a lot of different, uh, of our different recipes. Um, I'm actually a culinary I have a culinary background, so I create a lot of the recipes and we incorporate more of the spice of life than instead of adding salts. Besides the spice of life, we also do a lot of fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. so. so everything tastes good. It tastes it very tastes good. good. And, fresh. So, and yes. fresh. Everything is fresh. Yes. I know, I know. I was looking at our display here and these are many of the foods that you serve here, these fresh, the blueberries and, and the, the leek and right. all these wonderful fresh vegetables that you don't mm -hmm. always get. In right, a, um, absolutely in a facility so that mm -hmm. is that's wonderful and I noticed that instead of putting salt on the table you've got the the herbs the the spice, spice of, of life. life right mm -hmm. yes we do really pride ourselves on that that when you sit down at our tables you know you have the option to use salt and pepper but we really try to encourage people because it's proven when you add herbs and spices to your diet that it can help overall health Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be brain health, liver, kidney, heart, um, you know, inflammation. Mm -hmm. and, and to two, Kim's horn, she's wonderful. She actually created the spice of life. And people who use it, I get people when I'm out in the community that say, oh my gosh, I need a bottle of this. It's amazing. Uh -huh. um, and it's, it's really special. And she'll, she, you can tell me. 
Well, what happens is uh, a lot of times people return them and say, my bottle's empty. <laughs> can, can I get another bottle? So, um, you Like know, going to an olive oil store and bringing your container and right, getting more olive oil. They come and they bring their spice of life and say, give me more brain health. Please, right? yes. <laughs> yes, right. yes, exactly. Oh, that's wonderful, yeah. yes. And speaking of olive oils, we do use the extra virgin olive oil. That is like a really uh, good oil that yeah. we typically use in our communities. Uh -huh because it's a cold pressed <laughs> oil, mm -hmm. so what happens, it doesn't sit and ferment. So the extra virgin olive oils are healthier for you. Good, so. and you, you use like really nice lettuces, right? You <laughs> use the good, the good stuff. Like we use, really, we use a lot of spring greens, and nowadays we have a produce company that works for us, that works with us, that gives us like really nice kale lettuce as well. It's a small baby kale, oh. so you know, that's, beautiful, beautiful lettuce. What the greens we do is um, we do the arugula, we do the mixed greens, we do the baby kales, things like that. But a lot of our residents like the crunch because that's what they used to, you know, growing up, having that crunch in their salad. So what we do is we'll cut it with maybe some romaine mm -hmm. and have these nice greens mixed with it. And then again, it's also all about the flavor. So, you know, we like to create some really nice different salad dressings. So we go oh. with the seasons. Um, maybe in the fall we'll do like a nice maple mm. vinaigrette. Mm, yummy. In the summer we're gearing towards maybe more of a lemon vinaigrette mm -hmm. in the spring and then the summer maybe some type of berry. You're making me hungry. <laughs> and we're fortunate because yeah. we, again, having Kim and, and Josh who oversee our communities, you know, we as a community, as all of our senior living residences, it's really important that we do provide the best quality to our residents. And so we buy nothing but the freshest ingredients. Um, mm -hmm. Everything has to have a nutritional value or Kim will make sure that we are not ordering <laughs> that specific item. Yes. Um, so it's really important that we do provide the best. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and again, it goes back to, um, you know, quality of life mm -hmm. and making sure that we are doing the best we can, that when somebody comes to live here, that we're giving them an environment where they hopefully will thrive. Mm -hmm. And this has been proven to help brain health, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, my, I have a relative who loves salt. So if you have a resident that comes here and mm -hmm. is addicted to salt, how do you work on with that Well, we person? pretty much use a spice of life. Uh, we do a lot of fresh herbs. So that'll give you the flavor right there. And so, so they'll see that they don't need the salt. Yes. So as they taste it, you know, they'll say, okay, this is great flavor. Right. So we, we try to encourage them to tr taste it first. Uh -huh. we, they do have the option of salt and pepper. Right. You know, it is a choice. Right. So we do put that on the table as well. But, but you might convert them over. Yes. I hope yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. It, and you know, it's it's funny you mention that because we when we had opened here in Milford, um, we had a resident because I was here in the interim on the first three months, making sure everyone's doing the proper procedures and mm -hmm. you know the fresh produce and the cooking our our way. So um, we had a resident come up to me, it was the third month, and she said, you know, Kim, look at my feet. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not a nurse, I can't. She said, no, 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 look at my feet. And I looked down and she <laughs> goes, I'm wearing sneakers. It's the first time in a year I've been able to wear sneakers because I think a lot of less salt. Oh, isn't that one? Yes. Didn't that make you feel good? It made me feel great. I thought, oh, oh. my gosh, we're doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so you get to see that. Right. right. And what's happening right. is a lot of our elderly people are cooking from frozen product. Mm. So a lot of these products have a lot of high sodium in them. But to them, it's easier. You know, so yeah. it's, you know, make, taking that meal out and microwaving it. But we're going to show them today how easy it is that they can cook healthy at home yes. and they don't have Absolutely. to rely on, right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. on the junk food right. and have something tasty and right. yummy. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we try to tell our residents too is this, this is not just about what they, they're eating, but when you're, part, when you're really focusing on eating right and the habits that are around it, it is a lifestyle. This is not a diet per se. We really right. want to focus on the socialization piece as well. It's important that people understand that Sitting down with somebody and communing and having a meal together is just as important as eating the right foods that are in front of you. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe some of our viewers could cook this wonderful meal and invite a friend over yeah. and share the wonderful meal with them. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I go out into the community to talk about this program, we share things like, you know, how do I cook for one? Because you know when you go to the grocery store, you've got, you know, you have eight or ten hamburger rolls. You don't have one. Right. You know, you don't have two. How do you go out and cook with a friend, you know, share, share the things that you're purchasing, um, make that chicken you bought extend through the week, do things on a friendly budget, but also get exercise and be social while you're doing it. So that's part of what we're talking about today, but also in a broader spectrum, how we take it out into the community and share with people who aren't living in a community how they can make the best of this for themselves as well. Great. Great. And it's not all about just vegetables and things. Right. It's, it's everything that you're eating. Like It's all the whole grains. So you really want to concentrate on the whole grains. And again, with some of our residents, they, you know, born and raised with white bread. Right. You want the white bread, you know, which, as you know, it's not as good for you. So The one that had the dots on the wrapper, everybody <laughs> grew up with that, right? Exactly. <laughs> so what we did is um, I went to our bread purveyor and I said to them, we want to purchase from you, but th these are the products that we want. We want the whole grains. We want the whole grain, wheat, but a lot of our residents want white bread. So they put together a bread for us. It's, it's a whole grain white. Mm. So it looks like white. It tastes like white. I'll grab it right I actually have a, oh, you have <laughs> a it. sample okay. here. So it looks like white bread. It tastes like white bread. I even have people sample it when we go on the road, and they're like, oh, my gosh, it's white. No, it's a whole grain. It still has the whole grain. So that's something so it's that you healthy, want to, Yes. Mm -hmm. But it tastes like the bread that we grew up with. Right. Yeah. But you can also find this in the supermarkets as mm -hmm. well. You know, some of it will say white wheat, but the first ingredient should say whole grain. You know, right. as long as you're concentrating on the whole grain. And then um, the other things we use is, of course, everybody loves their potatoes. Yes. So we try to do more like sweet potatoes, which are very good for you. Um, there's what's called a purple potato. A lot of people don't know about that. Mm -hmm. So we do the red potatoes, purple potatoes, we mix them up, maybe, you know, put them in the oven, keeping the skin on them for more nutrients. Um, we do do the mashed potatoes. Yes, we do that. So, yes. <laughs> because yes. our residents like that. We use brown rice instead of white rice. There's not a big flavor difference. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we'll add maybe a little bit more vegetables, cut up really small. Um, We'll use maybe a couscous. We, we started getting into more um, the quinoas. Again, the quinoas will add more vegetables and flavor, maybe like a chicken ba base with it, mm -hmm. a chicken broth with it. So yeah. it's, it has flavor to it. Sounds good. Lots yeah. of herbs and spices, and then our, our spice of life, of course. Of course, yes. And they were saying barley is like the new rice. Yes. Right? Barley is big this year. This is like the year of the barley, and, and people are liking that. And like you said, you can, you can add broth and give it some flavor. So it's not absolutely so bland, and little right? vegetables and fresh herbs. You know, right. fresh herbs go a long way. It yeah. really gives it a lot of flavor. Right. Um, as you see at front here, we have a lot of beans. As you talk about the barley, we use a lot of the barley's, the lentils, the, the peas, the beans. In our communities, what we do instead of, if a resident wants a sandwich. Great, okay, so they can have a sandwich, we'll make a sandwich, but instead of giving them chips with a sandwich, we do like different types of salads. We'll do a black bean salad, mm. we'll do a chickpea salad, um, a broccoli salad, which is very current, and a lot of people like things like that. So we're do, doing more, again, more, we're adding more beans, we're adding more vegetables. Mm. And believe it or not, the residents really like them. Mm -hmm. if, if they want chips, they can get the chips. Right. But. And I think the great thing that we do in all of our communities, we try to be very innovative about the things that we do and try to introduce foods they wouldn't, as you said, wouldn't normally eat in ways that look more appetizing. So they might try something and be like, oh, I never tried that before and I can't believe how good that is or not even realize they ate something that's right. that afterwards they come back and go, oh my gosh, that was delicious. You know, and that's... Right. They that's, don't know. Right. You know, so now you are opening up a whole new world right. for them right. yes. that they didn't know. Right. And mm -hmm. it's fun to try all different things. Right. Especially our chickpea salad. That's like one of our most popular salads. And what we'll do is we'll hold like a food farm with our residents and say, we're thinking about putting this on the menu. Why don't you try it? See if you like it. And, you know, we get 
yay or nay, the majority of the time it's a yay, you know? I like that. A yeah. food farm. Mm -hmm. Food forum. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. food forum. I was thinking mm -hmm. farm to table. I was thinking <laughs> that kind of thing, which you kind of do, yes, right? You do, do. Right? you do the farm to the table. Mm -hmm. But the forum, so they have a, a way that they can kind of right. critique it and right. say, do I like this? Right. But at the end yeah. of the day, it's all about choice. You yeah. know, everybody has the choice to make whatever decisions they want about what they put into their own body. Yeah. We just want to be able to supply them with the best options Choices. possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing I looked on your website, and uh, you have helped with people's recipes. I guess you've helped yes. transform recipes into healthy, yes, yummy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, especially residents will come in and say, you know, I've had this recipe in my family for a long time. We'll cook it, and then what we'll do is we'll take, we'll, I'll pretty much critique it down into more healthier ingredients. So we'll do their recipe, and we'll do the healthier option. So what happens is they try them both, and they say, well, this is the healthier option. But, you know, it's just using different it, instead of ground beef, we'd use ground turkey. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it's a recipe on on that I, on that line, so you can change it up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, and I noticed that I know a, a lot of my family like pasta, and I noticed that you use whole wheat pasta. Well, um, that we definitely do. Some people like it, and some don't. So we do the two options, and sometimes we'll mix them together. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. So they'll get the benefits of both. And then what we're doing now is there's so many different pasta varieties out there right now made from vegetables, made from chickpeas, and they actually taste really good. So you're able to purchase things like that as well. For the gluten-free yeah. people. Yes. Not even gluten-free. It's nice. regular pasta, but they're made with maybe kale, oh. spinach. Yes, if you go into the supermarket, you'll I see that. I didn't know about kale. You know, it, it, it's funny because I thought, I'm not a really big kale person, and, and that's like one of the best things that you could put into your body, you know? <laughs> so I started working with it and trying different things, you know? If I take kale, I'll maybe saute it up with maybe some tomatoes and garlic. Uh -huh. So you give it more flavor, yeah. you know, and add some nice fresh herbs if you'd like to, you yeah. do something like that. But, um, well, I think some people think of kale as being like tough and, and kind of grumpy, right. you know, like you have to massage it to right. make it nice and it's like right. a lot of work. But like you said, there are different types of kale right. and kale is so good. It is. You yeah. know, especially in a soup, it's, right. you know, it's good. And I know kale we have wonderful. salads now. And another great way that we try mm -hmm. to introduce new foods to our residents is we do something called grab your passport. So again, as, as senior living residents, is we try to have this, we have this really strong rate value as part of it is being innovative trying new things um, but also discovery and we want our residents to try new things but we want to bring it, it to them in an environment that they can connect to mm -hmm. so one of the things that we do is grab your passport so every month we virtually go to a different part of the world and that particular day for instance we just had Greece so the food for that day was about Greece the music the history everything we did so that's a really great opportunity for us to introduce some normal some other food that they wouldn't normally have right. yeah Nice, nice, mm -hmm. good. And the majority of the time, what happens with that is the residents like it so much, you know, because it, I mean, you travel different countries, you're talking a lot of different spices. So we use a lot of the newer different types of spices that people really don't typically cook with all the time. So they'll say, well, can we have that on the menu? So it's like, okay, sure. So we end up yes. putting that on, the, on our menus. Yes, yeah. And I will say we're also one of the probably the few communities that we actually serve seafood nine to eleven times a week. Mm -hmm. In every community. Nine yeah. to eleven times. And that's great. It's really oh wonderful. My God, <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful because it really again is about choice. We always offer a seafood option as well as, you know, maybe chicken or some type of poultry or something else. But at the end of the day, again, they they don't have to have one of those two options. They can choose whatever they want. Uh -huh. But the seafood is really great quality. I'm not mm -hmm. talking like, you know, I'm talking like shrimp, I'm talking salmon. Um, yes, and typically um, if, if, you, if you're out there looking for to buy salmon in a supermarket, what I recommend, recommend is purchasing a wild caught salmon. And when you're looking at it in the supermarket, you could see the farm raised versus the wild caught. And you'll notice that it's a lot of a deeper, nice red color. Yes. So it's better quality. So, th and the reason we do a lot of seafood is because of the omega-3s. Mm -hmm. You know, so the omega-3s are really 
good for our brain and our body. So, and you know, some people come in, maybe typically they, you know, most people love seafood. Mm -hmm. You'll have one or two that, and you know, a little skeptical, you know, I didn't have a lot of seafood growing up. They'll try some of the items that we have, and we'll always have maybe pair it off with a nice sauce or like a nice pesto cream or, mm. you know, something that's really flavorful. Uh -huh. And again, adding the herbs and the spices, and they typically love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it changes the, their minds as far as yeah. some of the things that they're eating. Yeah. So. And like buying the salmon, you know, uh, I think we, some, in America, we have a lot of portions out right. of control. And so if you went in and you paid extra for the salmon, but you would have a smaller portion and you'd have more meals, then you would have healthy meals um, and it still would be cost effective. Absolutely. Know? And actually today we're going to demonstrate that. We're going to show you, you know, when you purchase your salmon, you may purchase an eight ounce piece. You'll eat half of that, you know, and then the other half we're going to show you what to do with. Okay. So it's All right. basically cooking for one. And the reason really we came up with this, Nan, is because Christine was out doing this program and, you know, quite a few people were talking about it, saying, well, this is really great. When we go out, they really like hearing about it. And then someone came up to us and said, but I'm by myself. Right. So we thought, you know what? Let's do cooking for one. Right. So. Pretty much the cooking for one is all about, it's a recipe book that I put together. Um, one day I stayed home all day. You are a very busy woman, <laughs> Kim. She's amazing. And she's an award winner. She winner, is. Right? Christine, you. Share what Christine you was I'm very telling proud of me this. that you won an award. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. So everybody wants her now, right? <laughs> Number one food and we service have provider in the United States. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It was quite the honor. So it was, uh, it was overwhelming. I was just, and, it was and great. I think the important thing, like, because we do value what we do so much, and it just goes to show, you know, she wasn't just up against assisted livings. You were up against skilled nursing facilities, hospitals. So wow. it really was wow. a great honor to see that the work that she's doing is validated. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and needed. Right. So you have this amazing cookbook. Yes, yeah, so um, we have this cookbook, and it's pretty much cooking for one. Mm -hmm. You know, so it has a recipe. It has a, uh, actually in the beginning of it, what to do, you know, to purchase in the supermarket, you know, for your one week's groceries. And then it will show you, um, you know, as far as how, you know, when you cook your chicken. So after you cook your chicken, the next day what to do with your chicken, the leftover chicken. Uh, cooking, sa cooking salmon, what to do with your leftover salmon. Um, it will show you a whole grain recipe where you could take the whole grain recipe and add um, probably like blueberries and strawberries mm -hmm. and make some muffins, you know, for breakfast. What you could do is probably take that same whole grain um, mix and you can make pancakes and you can make like a nice banana bread. Mm -hmm. So you're just doing this mix that's, uh, that you could purchase through the supermarket, but it's all what you're adding to, to the uh, mix, but the mix is a whole grain mix, so you're getting all your nutrients from that. Mm -hmm. So it's just and what you're adding to it. With the berries, you're making it healthier and tastier. Exactly. Absolutely, and, yes. we, and again, mm -hmm. we encourage our residents, but also again, when we do this presentation out on, on the road, at Council on Aging's or anybody that really wants this presentation, we really encourage them, you know, eat lots of green leafy vegetables, eat lots of berries, darker fruits are better, as, mm -hmm. as again, as Kim put out, you know, all of those darker, rich in color vegetables, um, nuts and grains, mm -hmm. you know, to encourage people to do that. And you can buy in bulk and, and how to preserve that so it doesn't go bad, but you can stretch it out over time or right. split it up with a friend. And then it's not so costly. Right. 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 I love the idea of sharing it with a friend. Right. Yes. Because yes. then you can both be healthy. Right. Right. <laughs> Times two. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. That's great. Yep. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. So actually, Nin, um, I know we talked about the spice of life. Here's another spice that we put on our tables, and this is actually a Saigon cinnamon. Okay, if you're going to purchase cinnamon, I would recommend more of a Saigon cinnamon because it has a sweeter flavor. It's not so bitter like a lot of cinnamons are. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit sweeter, and this encourages our residents to use the cinnamon instead of sugars, a lot of sugars. So they'll put it in the oatmeal, 
it sweetens up their oatmeal. Mm -hmm. um, you put it in your coffee. Um, we cook with this. You can put it in a tomato sauce. Just oh. a little bit, and it brings Instead out the, the other flavors. Yes. yes. Oh, what so a great idea. Yeah, so this is something, again, you'll see this in supermarkets I was just going to say, where can they get it? They, yes. Right. Yes, Do they have to come can. here? You obviously don't have a store here that they can come in and buy all these wonderful things. No, but as far as, like, the spice of life, I get calls for that all the time. Dude. And if people want to visit the community, I'm, you know, I will definitely share that with them. Mm -hmm. If I go out, do presentations, I'll share that as well. But the cinnamon, yeah, absolutely. They can get it in a store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's good to know. When you said sweets, and I know um, that you use stevia or truvia. Um, right. The only sugars we have on our table is sugar, of course, because you have a choice. And we also have truvia. So truvia is made from stevia. It's a natural plant. And they actually cut the truvia with erythritol, which is a powdered sugar alcohol, which is actually very good for your gums as well. For your gums. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? <laughs> okay. So um, it, it's a little bit of a better sugar. We don't, we try not, we don't use chemically induced sugars. I mean, I always tell people, the reason we don't use it, you know, they're not good for you. You're not really, scientists are still not, find, they're still finding, trying to find out what they're doing to our bodies. So they don't know. So they don't know. Right. Yeah. And if you look it up online, it's one molecule away from pesticide. So that's okay. scary. Yeah. scary. All right. All right. So that's, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So as far as like desserts, you know, we were talking about all these healthy, wonderful things. Um, how do you make, do you have desserts that are healthy? Yes, we do. What we do, again, is like I, when I was talking about that uh, whole grain mix, um, you can take a whole grain mix, and it's all about what you're adding to your desserts. You know, of course, you're going to want some of sugary desserts. Some people want that. It's a choice. You're going to have it. That's fine. But it's what we're adding to it. You know, you're adding berries to it. Maybe um, we're doing, uh, we'll do a nice sorbet, a mango sorbet, and we'll add fresh mangoes to it in the summertime. Mm. You know, um, if we have a cake, we'll try to use the whole grains. But what happens is our residents still like their ice cream. So yes. everything comes with ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> we, we try to encourage maybe using some berries on top of that exactly. ice cream. Yes. Which again, yes. that's not part of the Mediterranean diet either, yes. which all this is based off of. Mm -hmm. But we, again, like she said, we do understand they want that, you know, and they should yeah. be allowed to have that. So we just Absolutely. encourage a healthier version of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to have your ice cream. I don't care how <laughs> old you are, you need your ice cream. Exactly. Yeah. Full fat, high yeah. test. <laughs> exactly. And even yogurt, it's like, um, Doctors will tell a lot of their patients, you know, do the plain yogurt, it's better for you. So our residents are like, but I don't like plain yogurt, it's plain and it's boring. Yeah. So what you do is add a little bit of the cinnamon, add a little bit of the honey, add some berries, and Yum. You've got all your sweetness right there. This is a real tough show to do today because I'm getting hungry. We're just talking about all this delicious food. Wait till Josh starts cooking. I know, I know. I'm smelling something. It must be throughout the, yeah. the facility. Mm -hmm. But I think one important thing, if I can jump in, is, and I know I hear you say this all the time, and it is so true. You know, we promote healthy eating, but low fat is something you really want to be aware of. Yes. And you actually can talk even better yeah, to that. But you don't. Watch your fats. Um, and, and we do more, our pyramid is the baseline is um, all, a little bit activity, socialization. Uh -huh. Making sure you're drinking your water, things like that. And then you go into the second part of the pyramid, which is mostly greens and vegetables and fruits and whole grains. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is your seafood. So, you know, you have your omega-3s. And then you have a small portion where it is um, the sweets and meats. Red meat. So you want to really try to cut down on some of your, on your red meats yep. because, mm -hmm. you know, they're not as good for yeah. us. Um, I, I typically, if I, if I buy red meat, I try to purchase more um, grass-fed because mm -hmm. you know, it does have the omega-3s. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then from there on, you can go off to the sides of the pyramid where you have your water, but you also have a little bit of red wine. Right. 
you know, yes. and I, I believe it's one. And so it depends on if you're male, female, yes. whether what, how many ounces. And I get this question every single time I go on the road. What about the wine? You know, it's more more the red wine than the white. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the portion. Everything is about portion control. You it know, is. and red wine is healthy. S small amounts. Small right. amounts. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a whole bottle. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no. And, and even like a nice snack is like a handful of nuts. You know, usually the palm will be hand. You know, so that's pretty much a portion size. And what we do in our communities is, again, with the vegetables, we serve your protein, your starch, but we serve two vegetables. Mm -hmm. One is preferably a leafy green, but we also have your soup that has beans, you know, lots of beans in the soup sometimes. So depends what type of soup we're using, or the whole grains, the barley. And then we have your salads. So. We're doing a lot of different vegetables, so it's always good to encourage more vegetables. And lots of options, mm -hmm. you know, just because Absolutely. we have a couple specials every day, we try to encourage residents to mix their, their diet up so they're not eating the same things over and over again. Right. You know, and to encourage those healthy choices. Um, but if they come in and they don't see a special that they want, they always have other options as well. With, mm -hmm. And then again, at the end of the day, if they really don't see anything off the menu, just like in your restaurant, you know, can I order this? And if we have it, absolutely. Boy, if I lived here, I would really look forward to mealtimes. I would be like first in line <laughs> in your dining room. Sounds wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so are we almost ready to cook? Sure. Is there anything else that you want to say before we go to Chef Josh, who's been waiting patiently in the wings? <laughs> no, I think that we can incorporate we ready? Anything we want to say while you're... Okay. Sure. Right? All right. So take it away, Driving Chef <laughs> Chef Josh. Okay. So actually what Josh is going to be preparing today is a salmon cake. So again, this is when you go out and you're purchasing uh, a piece of salmon, you know, cooking for one. So you're cooking for one. You want a big enough piece where you have your salmon that evening and the next day you have the leftover piece. So what you'll do with the leftover piece is we will take um, the salmon, as Josh is doing, and he's going to make salmon cakes with that. So he's going, I actually, yeah, I actually simplified these recipes because that was another thing that people talked to me about. They were saying, you know, Kim, I really like this, but I don't want to put a lot of time and all this effort with all these ingredients. So. I I thought, great, okay, this actually made it a little bit easier for me as well, but you still want it to taste good. So most of these ingredients that we have in the book are probably five or six ingredients. And affordable. And affordable. Yes. And affordable, which is good. really important. That's very for important. For those who are people on the community. Incomes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. But I like the idea of simplicity because you get these cookbooks for Christmas from your children and you look and there's like, I don't know how many ingredients right. <laughs> and you don't even, I don't even know what half of them are. Right. And I have to look it up to see what it is. So mm -hmm. that's great that you keep it simple. We simplify it. And everything is so complicated, especially I find as I get older, I find it, it's better to keep it simple. Right. Right, so that's what, you know, that was the other thing that they talked about. So, you know, they, they spoke, I listened, and I said, okay, let's do this. We could do this, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you see, the book is really, really a, a nice little um, one week's of meals. One week. One, week, oh, one, yeah, sorry, one week of just meals, you know, what to do that complete week, you know. So you go to the supermarket, you purchase your products. You know, it'll show you from the start to the end, mm -hmm. you know, what to do with uh, your leftovers. So, And the majority of people that come into the communities, you know, they have loved ones at home that are living alone. And over 50% of them are at home with dementia. So they're eating cereal out of a box, mm -hmm. or they're, they're not drinking enough, and they're having those hospitalizations because they're not getting the right nutrients in their body. And again, having this cookbook for those family members or for those who are able to still cook and make those decisions and go grocery shopping, um, it's been a really big help for those families out in the community right. and those people and to know how to do it. Because you're right, you look at something and if there's too many steps, too you lose the interesting. You do. Oh, really and cooking sometimes is even uh, you know monumental. Just getting ready to cook. Right. So if you've got all these ingredients, but if you can make something like this, and then afterwards you feel so 
like rewarded that you did something so great, it smells good, you know, because again, cooking is not just about picking out the right nu nutrients, but it's who are you eating with, who did you go shopping with, yeah, the relational um, piece. The relationship piece, right. absolutely. And right. then even just having being able to smell, like our chef will come out once a week and do a cooking demonstration to introduce new foods to the residents, but if part of it is just the experience of smelling the foods, being around together where they can share this time and then eat whatever exciting food that he made that day. That's great. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, he put it together that, that quickly. That was pretty fast. <laughs> Very we easy. were busy talking and you got them all made. So what is in that? that uh, in the cake itself, it is um, just flaked cooked salmon. So it's fresh salmon that was seared off. So this is something that you can have in the fridge from the night before and you can utilize. The rest of the ingredients that are put in here is probably stuff you have every day. Um, Breadcrumbs, which whole grain breadcrumbs, um, a little red onion, uh, a little bit of fresh dill, spice of life, and egg, and then just molding them into cakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that's simple. That's mm -hmm. simple. Yes. Yeah. One you thing got I, a little, oh, go ahead. You got a little olive oil in the pan? A little bit of olive oil in there to sear the cakes off. Um, again, this this recipe can be adjusted if you like a little more or something or add a, a little extra something in there or take something out or you know want more onions or other herbs mm -hmm. um, it's it's very simple mm -hmm. I like dill I like dill with my salmon mm -hmm. yum mm -hmm. and one sure. thing that we do encourage people to is that you know we, we're we do provide this information and education, but at the end of the day, you really need to consult your doctor if you're considering on adding certain foods to your diet that maybe are not appropriate based on medications you're taking. Um, so that's a really important part of the messaging that we're trying to get across as well. Is to check with your doctor. Check with your yeah. doctor. Yeah. Make sure. Because people, when we're doing this, a lot of people ask me and I say, I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. You know, you would definitely have to reach out to check your doctor out. and see if this is best for you. Right. So, right. So, along with the salmon cakes that Josh is making, he's also making a, a little remoulade sauce, okay, just for added flavor. Mm. A little, a little healthier flavor. version mm -hmm. than the, uh, the, the one. classical <laughs> French one. Okay. And this is something you came up with? Yes. So, this is actually, instead, this is a Greek yogurt mm -hmm. that we start with as a base. And then we add a little bit of pickle relish, which you have in your refrigerator, you know, pretty much everyone has that in your refrigerator. Uh, a little bit of ketchup and a little bit of uh, black pepper. That's it. That's it. Wow. And the flavors of it. And then you add a little bit of, we add a little bit of fresh parsley. That's up to you. You could use fresh, you could use dry, whatever you prefer. But it gives it a little dipping sauce if you'd like something like that. With the Greek yogurt. Yeah, Which absolutely. is yummy. Yes. yes. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So these are recipes that are very easy to uh, play around with and adjust some of the uh, ingredients. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about the cookbook. How would people get the cookbook? Because I know that our view, we've been talking about the cookbook. Is there a, a way that they could get that? So when I go out into the community and I do these presentations, I bring a cookbook for every person that attends the presentation. Okay. And we can do presentations here where we give them out, or I, again, go on the road and do this anywhere. Um, you know, and so we'll give them that way. If somebody came into the community and they said, you know, I saw your presentation on Franklin TV, I would love to get a cookbook, you know, and they came in to visit, I would, I would absolutely welcome great, that as great. well. So if they saw it on yes. our TV yeah. show, they would... Yeah, but I would definitely recommend people to look at our website, too, because I, when you go to Cornerstone Milford, you're going to see lots of information that's not specific to Cornerstone. It's, again, having those right values and wanting to do the right thing by the people not only that live here, but the associates that work here. We want to make sure we're being a good resource for people outside of our building. I was going to say, you're a co good community person, yes. you know, as far mm -hmm. as taking care of our community around us, because I know you've done this program in many places right. around us. And there's lots of resources on that. That website um, you know that will direct them about healthy eating about lots of other again like lots of other information that's outside of Cornerstone at Milford that can provide um, guidance in I did I, I went on your website and I found a lot of information <laughs> about the Mediterranean diet and mm -hmm. that's that's how mm -hmm. I knew that you, you you'd use certain right. things right. like, like the, even the, our connection with old ways yes mm -hmm. and actually I think Josh is finished oh it's, my goodness it's just that easy Look at how beautiful it's that how fast looks. Fast. How fast was that? That was fast. 
and just with uh, simple ingredients. Would yes. you like to try a piece? I would love, I was hoping you were going <laughs> to ask me to do that. Oh my goodness, this is the best part of my job, I get to taste. Okay, thank you, thank We're you. We're fortunate because our residents eat like this every day. This is not just a sample because you're here today. We no, actually this provide this quality every single day mm -hmm. to our residents, to our associates. It's amazing. Oh, so <laughs> good. And so simple. So simple. So, so fresh. Yes. yes. Exactly. Oh my Even goodness. Even for those who say, I can't cook, you know, Kim has made it this simple. This is like, yeah, it's gourmet. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we can have our our viewers be gourmet chefs in yes. their kitchen. Impress your family. Every day, impress their family and be healthy. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. so good. Ah, oh, I have to take one more bite. Oh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you for, for having us. us. Thank you for all that you do for our community. And maybe you could come to Franklin, you know, maybe we could that. have you in Franklin and spreading this good news Absolutely. around. Absolutely. And Chef Josh, you did a great job. Very welcome. Thank you very My much. Pleasure. And him, continue Thank to you. do the great work that you do. Maybe you. more awards are in your future. <laughs> but you're Thank doing you. great things for our seniors and to help keep us all healthy. And Christine, you are a wonderful light and spirit in this community. And I thank you so much for thank all you. that you we do. Thank you, we appreciate having you. And thank you for coming on our show. Thank you. This has been Senior Connection, and I'm Nan Rafter. And until we connect again, enjoy each day. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.